All right, so what's popping, y'all? Welcome back to another Pokemon reaction video. This time, if you guys know we did like the Papa C series, you know what I'm saying. We've done Gens 1 through 4, or through 3, and here we are with Gen 4. And since Diamond and Pearl are getting their remakes this year, which, you know, we're getting leaks of, right? Here we are with another Papa C video, beating Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, how Nintendo intended it. And I'm very excited because, uh, I don't know, these these reaction videos are very, very fun. Thank you, everybody, that's been uh, showing love to Papa C. Papa C, thank you for the content because I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I actually enjoy this series a lot. And, I mean, hey, it's clear that people do, too, because this was uploaded, what, what, three days? Three days, three to maybe two days before this video went live, and it's already got 81,000 views, which is saying a lot, right? So here we are. Uh, make sure you leave a like, a comment, subscribe for some more Pokemon content, as well as go show Papa C some love. I'm going to link the original video along with his channel in the description section below. And uh, if you guys like this, let me, know this, let me know in the comment section below uh, some more videos you guys would like to see me react to. Uh, because I'm gonna keep it stack with you. It's kind of it's kind of drive Pokemon content right now But we're in February, so it's Pokemon month. So it is what it is. Excuse the do-rag It's like a, it's like a one-piece do-rag because you know what I'm saying you no know saying I look good I just got my hair twisted. So, you know, it is what it is. Let's get into it. man. I'm excited. Let's go Still one of the most beloved games bro, in the bro, bro, whoa, Go back Pokemon Diamond and Pearl have their fair share of flaws However, they are still one of the most beloved games in the entire Pokemon series now. Wait a moment. Let's talk about the flaws the only thing people can say about Pokemon Diamond and Pearl is that one, the games are slow. The engine is slow. That's facts, right? And then two, how there's like not that much variety of Pokemon. That's, that's, to me, that's the only ones that are like there's, there's real, you know? There's a lot of hype around these games since they are next in line for a remake. And it seems like just about every week or so now, there's some sort of rumor that comes out about a potential Diamond and Pearl remake from the Nintendo Switch. Now, wait. I'm gonna say this right now. If we don't get a Diamond and Pearl remake, <laughs> if we don't get a Diamond and Pearl remake, despite all the official like stuff that's been like getting put out, I'm gonna genuinely be surprised. I'm talking about like, what, what, what would, what would, how would the, how would you react if like, despite all like the official Diamond and Pearl like stuff that's coming out, or I guess Sinnoh stuff coming out? We still never got a remake. How would you feel? Let me know in the comment section. I still remember checking Cerebi daily leading up to the North American release of Diamond and Pearl. Same. And even to this day, they were the Pokemon games that I was the most excited for when Same. they were coming out. Diamond and Pearl are nearly 15 years old now. Really? And chances are if you stumble across this video, you've probably played them yourself or at least know the general idea of how to beat them. Love these have games. Have you ever played through Pokemon Diamond and Pearl? Love these following games. Following a strategy guide and doing exactly as it tells you. No, I did not. I have this Pokemon Diamond and Pearl strategy guide from Nintendo Power. Oh! And it even says that it's the official Nintendo player's guide. Today, we'll be trying to I was gonna Pokemon say. Diamond and Pearl as Nintendo intended just like we did a few other times. So if you guys are like new to these type of videos, uh, the first three, he wasn't using the Nintendo Power uh, guidebooks. He was using like these third party guidebooks that are like Nintendo licensed. So this is the first time he actually has a Nintendo Power, Nintendo, an actual official Nintendo guidebook, which is dope. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you've played Diamond and Pearl, which one did you play first or which one did you play uh, originally, like I played Diamond, I gave Max my little brother Pearl, uh, and we just played those side by side. And I used to always bully him, saying like, "Oh, Pearl is for girls." I hated Palkia. I still hate Palkia. Palkia is trash. Times in the past <laughs> with a few other Pokemon games. Unlike the previous videos I made, like this, however, this is as Nintendo intended as it gets. Since the other times I used third-party guides from other companies that were just licensed by Nintendo, while well, this one is straight from Nintendo themselves. Yo, this looks really the detailed, part, the third though. Third-party guides are funnier when compared to the official. This looks Nintendo really Power detailed, guide, though. With the Prima Fire Red and Leaf Yo, Green guide key. being the best example of I'm this, not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna actually go ahead and buy the, the guidebooks for all the, uh, the Pokemon games. Things. I love I love the guides, guides because the they're, they're just really dope. Through Pokemon before while trying to beat this game, you can literally a hundred percent everything. I got, like a, I got a sun and moon uh, to beat the game. I got a sun and moon the thing. Guide, the first thing I that's have the only to guide that I got is yes, there is a berry page in this guide. 
I actually bought this guide online and didn't have this as a kid growing up, and for some reason in all of the Pokemon guides I had as a kid, I always cut out the berry pages. This guide goes more in-depth than the other guides I've seen, however, with the actual walkthrough starting on page 46 and the previous pages explaining how the Pokemon games work, as well as any- Oh, they go ham on the information the here! ...brought to the Pokemon series. One of the first things Wait I- Wait a moment, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause I, I kinda wanna see if they keep that trend in this Sun and Moon one. I have, I have the Sun and Moon one, and I wanna know if, yeah, it's pretty much like, the same thing. Like, they don't give you, like, a, uh, what is this? Official little strategy guide. Read a context. This is the index. Table of content. The walkthrough, it starts for, the walkthrough for Sun and Moon starts at page 13. And you would ideally, this is literally everything. This is literally everything, dude. Yo. Yo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is everything, dude. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna look through this later, but let's let's continue the video. I'm sorry. I'm this paragraph sorry, about so the Team Galactic grunts on page seven, which describes them as a small army of Nair Duels. I have no idea what that means, and I've never seen that phrase before. But after googling it, it apparently means a person who is lazy and irresponsible. Yes. Next, I notice a few pages about picking your starter, which we'll get back to in a little bit. But it also says that your starter is the only Pokemon that will be given to you and you won't be given any other free Pokemon, which isn't entirely true since you can receive an Eevee after obtaining the National Pokedex, as well as a Hapini and a Riolu Egg while playing through the game normally. It then goes pretty in-depth with Pokemon battling, but instead of calling super effective moves just super effective, it calls them type trumping moves for some reason. The next page goes on to cover the physical and special move split which happened in Generation 4, and it gives the example of Hitmonchan using Fire Punch since prior to Generation 4, Fire Punch was a special move so it wasn't very good on a physical attacking Pokemon like Hitmonchan. Out of all of the Pokemon and moves they could have picked for this, they actually picked Hitmonchan, which is funny since it happens to be one of my favorite Pokemon. Hitmon it then goes better. on to cover just about every mechanic in Pokemon you can imagine, from abilities, breeding, Pokechaps, and even it about has the super everything. Contest. Finally getting to the actual That's really fire. of the guide, it has a checklist of important events we have to do in each area. These will be highlighted more as we go on, and I'm sure there will be a few extra tasks that the guide mentions, but I think a good benchmark will be to try and check off as many of these tasks as we can. Mm. I also want to give a huge shout out to Mystery Ore for inspiring this series with their Minecraft videos, and finally we can start to load up the game. Let's begin to Man, hammer what, what am I getting a shout out? <laughs> I'm sorry. Pokemon Diamond I'm so and beat it exactly <laughs> as Nintendo. What am Nintendo. I getting a shout out? Yo, dude, I haven't seen the Nintendo DS see. thing for so. No, I have not seen. I have not seen that thing in years. To load up Bro. the game. Let's begin to hammer away at Pokemon Diamond. I have not seen exactly the, 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 the DS opening thing. Bro, it's been it's been years. Starting the game off, I named myself C, and then I named my rival Barry in all caps, since I accidentally named myself in all caps too, and didn't realize until now. The guide tells us that as much as you may like to hang out in your room playing with your Wii, adventure is beckoning. That line can no, be interpreted in a couple of different ways, but I do all of the beginning stuff the guide says and head to Lake Verity. Now we can go back to our checklist at the start of the guide and check that off. And with that, we completed the first section of the guide, how epic. Eventually, we get presented with the starter selection screen by Lake Verity. There's some small notes on this page that detail each of the three starters, but earlier on in the guide, it goes much more in depth with these three Pokemon, even detailing their full learn set and weaknesses. It mentions how Turtwig specializes in HP draining grass type attacks and will eventually learn ground type moves and dark type moves to increase the number of types it can trump. It then goes on to say that Turtwig is somewhat lacking in power early on, and that I should focus on leveling up quickly for the very first gym. For Chimchar, it mentions how it will gain the secondary typing of fighting once it evolves, and although it isn't a great typing defensively, it's pretty good offensively. It then goes on to say that it will struggle against the first gym, but will be smooth sailing after that. This mm. last sentence alone makes you feel like Chimchar is the better choice over Turtwig. And finally, there's Piplup, which the guy says is the most defensive-oriented of the three starters. It mentions how Piplup will be good against the first gym, but a liability for the second gym. 
This makes me feel like the guide is telling me that Piplup is just worse than the other two starter choices, so I decided to pick Chimchar since the guide tells me it would be smooth I, sailing with it after okay, the first Okay, so, so, so first and foremost, in the comment section below, let me know, like, out of the three, which one's your favorite? I already know I'm going to have a lot of uh, Chimchar comments, so I don't even know why I even bother. But I think 4th Gen is the one generation where all of them are good. Like, despite Piplup being, like, the one that's, like, the... Uh, I guess we could say worse. I feel like it still gets Ice Beam and Ice type moves, so it can still do something against Torterra. Uh, Torterra gets Earthquake, which is nuts. Um, I feel like all around they're the best trio of starter Pokemon that we have that we have to this day, actually. Like. And I hope that it's correct. I think they're all and good, to personally. Town, meet Professor Rowan and Dawn again, and get the chance to nickname my Chimchar. I decide to name it Sun Wukong after the mythical Chinese Monkey King, and then I buy a few Pokeballs and potions from the Mar like the guy tells me to, before returning home to Twinleaf Town to get the running shoes for my mother, and the parcel from Barry's mom to give to Barry. Headed into Route 202, the guide gives me tips for the first trainer battle, but all it really does is tell me how the trainer will have a level 5 Starly, and it won't be much of a threat. This guide doesn't outline each trainer's teams like some other guides I've seen have, where they go more in-depth with the types of the Pokemon that the trainers have, as well as the movesets of each of the Pokemon, and it doesn't even mention how many different trainers there are in each area. It does have this chart on each route to show what Pokemon appear though, as well as what time of day they're most likely to appear in, which is kind of that's, helpful. That's kind of dope! It mentions two of the wild Pokemon that can be caught on Route 202, being Krikatot and Shinx. The guide says how Krikatot can't do much in combat, but it will be a worthy recruit when it evolves to Krikatoon at level 10 and begins to learn some attack moves. I try and find it and then realize that they don't appear at the time of day that I was playing in, so I catch a Shinx instead, although the guide doesn't really say anything about Shinx besides mentioning that it appears here, which I thought was strange since Shinx is one of the better early route Pokemon in all of Pokemon. I decide to keep up with the True. mythological theme and name Shinx, Lady Thor, and then head into Jubilife City, which has a lot for us to do. Some we can't do right away since we'll have to do it on return visits in the future, but I also noticed that in addition to the big checklist at the start of the guide, each important area also has their own mini set of checklists. The first thing we have to do here is talk to Dawn, then visit the trainer's school and deliver the parcel to Barry. We also have to challenge these two trainers in the trainer's school, each of which have one Abra, to get the TM for hidden power from them. I didn't even know you could do that, which is pretty cool. Then I talk to all the clowns to get the poke edge, create a group where really? I pick my trainer class, which is what I'll look like in the union room, get a free quick claw, the old rod, and also get interviewed by this reporter, but all I said was eek. The rest of the events here we have to take care of on our return trip, so for now we have to head over to Route 203 for a rival fight. The guide says how Barry will have whichever starter trumps yours, so in this case he'll have a Piplup, as well as a Starly. It then tells me to have my starter Pokemon battle the Starly, which I do, and then battle his starter Pokemon with my newly caught Pokemon, in this case Lady Thor, which gets us the victory. After dispatching my rival, the guy then suggests I battle the rest of the trainers on this route and catch a Pokemon or two, so I caught a Starly and named it Caligrius after the mythical Roman bird to keep up with our mythical theme. That's high. Looking back on this, I don't know why I couldn't think of any mythical bird at the time. I actually googled mythical bird and Caligrius was the first one to come up. Now that I'm thinking about it though, why didn't I name it say Garuda or Nephthys or Horus or a much more common mythical bird without having to yeah. Google it, but I digress. Now we have to head over to the Ouroburg Gate where I find the HM for Rock Smash, which we can use after we get the first gym badge. Once I make it to Ouroburg City, the first thing we have to do here is talk to our rival outside of the gym, where we learn that the gym leader, Rorik, isn't there yet. There's a couple of other small things we have to do here before finding Rorik, like at the Dust Ball, but the guide also says how I can trade him a chop for an Abra. This is optional, but it seems like a pretty good trade to me since Abra is a psychic type, which we can't really find too many of early on, at least the guide didn't outline any as of yet. But then I look back on the guide at what places we've been to see where I can catch a Machop, and it doesn't say anything about where to get a Machop. I know that I can find a Machop north of Ouroburg City on Route 207, but if I look at the picture of Ouroburg City at this part of the guide, it shows that 207 is up north, but it says it won't detail it until page 69. 
It looks like we'll have to wait at least a little bit before we get him a chop and possibly even an Abra, but for now let's just focus on finding the gym leader Rorik. I head into the Ouroberg mine and meet Rorik, so now we can challenge him at his gym. I go on to read the section about his gym, and the guide recommends the types fighting, grass, and water, which I have none of. Further along in the same section, it says how if you started with Chimshar, which we did, you should go north to Route 207 to catch him a chop, so I do that even though Route 207 isn't fully detailed until much later in the guide. I catch the Machop, name it Hercules, level it up a bit, and head into the gym. It recommended that I use my best Pokemon. The Nintendo ones like so much like personality dog. Like at least like the the first three had like somebody else that was like making it, so like it was a lot more humorous. This one's kinda like kinda kinda dry a little bit though, a little bit. I don't know, that's just that's just me. So I use all of my other Pokemon until they faint, so all that's left is my Machop. It does a lot of damage to Rorik's Rock-type Pokemon and gives us the victory. Not necessarily an easy victory since all of my Pokemon besides Hercules ended up fainting as it recommended that I save Hercules till the end, but if I had just led with Hercules in the first place, or even evolved Chimchar into Monferno so it could have learned Mach Punch before the gym started, things would have gone much smoother. Now the guy tells us to head back to Jubilife City and take care of these Galactic Grunts with Dawn where my Chimchar finally evolves into Monferno. Now we go up north around that late? Four with the guide only telling me to do this one double battle on this entire route, and also talk about how I should take good care of Badu since they evolved through friendship, so I caught one anyway and named it Flora after the Roman goddess of flowers. This brings us to Flora Town now, where I have to steal these berries from in front of the flower shop, go inside the shop to get the spray duck, and then get the TM for pluck from this girl in another house. I thought that getting this TM was just another throwaway tip since TMs are generally pretty good, but it actually comes up a couple of more times in this guide, surprisingly. Now I have to take care of the Galactic Grunt standing in front of the Valley Windworks, then head back to Florima Town to get the key from these grunts so we can go inside of the building. Did Once it say anything? I, I, I guess Galactic it didn't. Commander I was gonna say, did it say anything about the Drift Loon that you can get there? The guide says I should have some. And with my Starly knowing the move Pluck, since it also suggests that I use Pluck on our Prugly to take its berry. Unfortunately, my Starly faints before I could use Pluck since Prugly was faster, so I defeat her with my Monferno anyway and head up north towards Eternal Forest. There really isn't much to detail here besides the fact that we have to go through the forest with Cheryl and her Chansey, and that there's this pleasantly cool rock here that the guide alludes to being connected to Eevee and Leafeon, but doesn't directly say this is how you evolve Eevee into Leafeon. This takes us to Eterna City, where we first have to meet Cynthia in order to get the HM for cut from her, then into the Pokemon Center for a new Pokatch I'll probably never use, and then into the bike shop where we learn that the bike owner is missing. All that's really left to do now is challenge the second gym leader Gardenia and her grass type Pokemon, which we match up pretty well against since we have two of the three recommended types for this gym being fire and flying. This guide specifically mentions how Starly and Cricketot are good here, so I use my Starly for all of the trainers before the gym leader, and it ends up evolving into Staravia here. Now against Gardenia, I lead with Staravia again to trump her Grass-type Pokemon with my Flying-type moves. And right before this battle, I also decided to visit the Name Raider to change Staravia's name into Garuda, since I kept forgetting what its old name was, and I figured Garuda was a much more known mythical bird. I hammer away at her Cherubi with my Staravia, and then use Sun Wukong against her Turtwig, and then go back into my Garuda on her Ace Pokemon Roserade, since the guide again recommends I use Pluck to take her Citrus Berry, she has which a citrus I actually berry? pull off this time. I continue to hammer what? away at her, and within two shakes of a lamb's tail, we get the second gym I back, want as well as the ability to use the <laughs> I didn't even cut know all that. I battle. thought, okay. I teach cut to Flora, chop down the tree in front of the Galactic Building, and finally head in. For the four recommended types the guide has for this fight against Jupiter, I only have one type of my electric type Shinx, but it doesn't even know any electric offensive moves as of yet. I decide to level it up a little bit anyway since I notice it's a few levels below Jupiter's Pokemon, and it ends up evolving and learning Spark, which is perfect. I then head and stake on Jupiter with a few antidotes as the guide recommends. I take care of her two Pokemon with Lady Thor pretty easily, save the guy who owns the bike shop, and get the bike as a reward for saving him. Now we can head down to Route 206 to careen down the cycling road, as the guide says. This leads us into Route 207, where we can finally access Orberg City again quickly to heal up. I also decide here to go back and do that Abra trade in the same town, and trade away my Machop for it, since Monferno is a fighting type now, and I haven't really been using Machop at all since the first gym battle. Mm. Then I run into Cyrus, talk to the Berry That's Master, smart. get the old Keystone, 
and head into Harthum City. I look at the map of Harthum on the guide and realize that it's much bigger than I originally thought, and I also realize that all of the towns in general in the Sinnoh region are bigger than I realized. Yes. I never really saw all the towns blown up in a they video are, like this. In so book, so I think this is the best thing that I'm really excited for in the Diamond and Pro remakes whenever they come out is Harthum City because I they might remove this church first and foremost. But they might keep at the same time because who knows? This might be the first game where Arceus gets like a a a, a mention or something like that because you know Arceus is like the creator and like he's been uh more so in like events or whatever. So this might be the first time when we actually start getting like nods to him and stuff like that. That which would probably be dope. Uh, Am Amity Square might actually be like a uh like an actual place that you can like visit in her home. You know, you can go visit it here, but I feel like they might try to do this thing where like they implement like maybe like the uh the let's go style or maybe make this part of like a wild area thing in the Sinnoh remakes because like, you know, the whole purpose of this was to like play uh with your thing. So the, uh, Amity Square might be uh like the Safari Zone and Let's Go where you can bring in your Pokemon home uh Pokemon, but that's Pal Park too. Pal Park would be, I don't know. What would you, Amity Square might be taken out probably because of the Ami feature. You could like Pokemon Camp in Amity Square maybe. Maybe that's where that's at is that instead of having it where like, oh, you can set up a camp or set up shop right here. You can have to go to Amity Square to play with your Pokemon and uh, throw, play with them in toys and stuff like that. But then you bring and transport all your mods into Pal Park and you have to catch them through there. Bring them to Amity Square. You can get to like play with them in like the camp or whatever. That'd be a good idea. Right now. Just putting that out. Cool that'd, be, that'd be a good idea. There's plenty of minor things we can do here, like make a poffin, which I totally didn't burn, meet Fantina, who we can battle later on, and go into the contest hall where I meet your mom, as the guide puts it. I then pick up the Shell Bell and then head into the next rival fight. The guide recommends that I bring a wild Pokemon that trumps my rival starter Pokemon's type, and since I already have Luxio, I just hammer away at him for the victory. I pick up this egg before leaving the city, which will evolve into a Hapini, so by the time we return here for the gym battle, we can finally enter Amity Square with it. In order to enter Amity Square, you need a cute Pokemon on your team, and for some reason they decided that Buddu wasn't cute enough to accompany me here. This brings us into Route 209, where I upgrade my fishing rod and battle this jogger who only appears between 4am and 10am. The guide says how there isn't any particular prize for beating him, but it's worth the trouble to teach him a lesson about being so darn perky in the morning. I guess this guide writer doesn't like mornings for some reason, because that was one of the weirdest excerpts I have seen in this guide so far. Next we head to the top that of the Lost weird. Tower to get the HM for strength, and finally into Solisian Town where we have a few minor things to do here. I get a free Poket Shop, have the option to deposit some Pokemon in the daycare here, get the seal case, and explore the Solution Ruins a bit while I run into some unknown. Now we have to go up north to Route 210 to get the TM for Roost, some milk, and say hi to these side ducks that are blocking the road for now. Not much happens on the next route, and finally we head into Veilstone City, where we get a few freebies from the department store, a coin case for the game corner which tents me a little bit since I noticed we can get the TM for Psychic here, which Kadabra can definitely use, and I also leveled up Kadabra a little bit thanks to this EXP share I now have. I then give Buddu a massage here to boost its happiness since it is also a valuable member of our team cutting down any trees in our way, and head into Maylene's fighting type gym. The guide recommends that I use Psychic, That's so weird, I forget the order of the gyms. Three types, I figure we should dispatch Maylene pretty quickly. Now, I forgot the order of the gym, I thought you battled Fantina, but my last platinum. Type, meta type, and Machoke, as the guide recommends, take them down pretty quickly, then switch into Garuda for Lucario, so I can go for Pluck on it, and of course, take it Citrus Berry. Now, I don't know about you guys, but out of all of the times I played through Diamond and Pearl, as well as any other Pokemon game that has a TM for Pluck early on, I have never used Pluck on any Pokemon, and I still can't believe Same. that the guide has directly told us to use Pluck so many times. This gym goes by very well for us, of course, though, thanks to the duo of Kaza and Garuda, giving us the third gym badge, a useful TM in Drain Punch, and the ability to use the HMO Fly outside of battle. As I exit the gym, I see Dawn and she tells me to help her battle some Team Galactic Grunts with her which we end up defeating. I head into their base, get the HM for Fly, and the guide tells us to fly back to Hearthome City so we can head south of there into Pistoria City for the next gym badge. This part of the game gets a little confusing with how the order is oriented and they even ended up changing this a little bit in Platinum and people very often would get stuck here in Diamond and Pearl, so let's see how this guide handles it. I head down south of Harthome onto Route 212 and make a quick stop into the mansion to get the Soothe Bell from this maid. 
The guide also references Mr. Backlot's statue who is the owner of this mansion, and that there is a guard that stops you from touching the statue during most hours of the day. It then goes on to say that if you come back between the hours of 2am and 6am, not sure who's playing Pokemon Diamond and Pearl at those hours, you can touch the statue since the guard is on his break, I am, <laughs> or I was, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I used to sneak, my mom used to be so mad at us whenever we would play uh, our DS games early, and like, we're supposed to be sleep or whatever, because we used to like, uh, I used to have terrible sleeping back in the day, I used to be, I, it used to be bad for me, like way bad, and uh, I would be up at 2am, 6am watching like Inuyasha, and like anything that was on Adult Swim at the time as well. So like I was definitely up at these hours playing Diamond. And then the guy definitely tries up. to do some definitely weird I was evil laugh up. through text it looks like. Like for the most part this guide is pretty clean cut straightforward. And then you have these weird random things like this where it just goes off for no reason. On this route I also decide to catch another Pokemon since I haven't caught one in a little while. I also noticed that the guide recommended water types for a few different battles, and I still don't have any, so I figure my best chance to get a water type is to fish with my good rod in the water. After a few attempts of not getting any nibbles, I land a barboge, which I caught and named Neptune, then add to the team in place of the egg, which I really don't care much about hatching. Next, I make it into Pistoria City, pick up the free berry, visit the Burmy fan club, which I didn't even know existed until just now, find the move tutor, and get another mask accessory for contests. Next, we have to take on Crasher Wake in the fourth gym badge already, which the guide recommends that we use electric and grass types for. We have electric types covered with Lady Thor, but no real grass types outside of Budu, which is still only level 6. I check my TMs and also notice that I have the TM for Grass Nut, which I can teach to Kadabra, although Kadabra is a pretty high level now and sometimes loafs around because it was a traded Pokemon. I head into the gym anyway after teaching Grass Nut to Kadabra, clear out all the trainers, and then finally face Crasher Wake. I leave with Lady Thor on his Gyarados and spark it, but he actually ends up switching into Quagsire which surprised me. Trainers pretty rarely switch in Pokemon games, but I go into Kadabra and knock out the Quagsire, then Lady Thor which finishes the rest of the gym. Surprisingly, no pluck strats in this battle. As I head out of the gym and out of the town, I talk to the Galactic Grunt in front of the Great Marsh that we have to chase around, but I get interrupted by my rival who wants to have another fight. My rival also what? ends up switching in battle which surprised me again having them happen in two back to back battles. But luckily I have a team of diverse Pokemon that can type trump him as the guide says to give us the victory. Now that we have 4 badges I think now is a good time to check on the checklist that we have at the start of this guide. So far we checked off pretty much everything that we could except for this one event in Silesian Town where I forgot to catch an unknown to show this boy so I guess I might as well backtrack and just do that soon. At this point I head back to Silesian so we can catch an unknown to show to this boy for our checklist and I quickly visit the Great Marsh on my way back to Pastoria as well. I get the HM for Defog and also run into this Budu in the grass that's a much higher level than mine so I decide to catch it and name it Flora the Second and replace it with the Budu I've been holding for so long. I then follow around the Team Galactic Grunt that's again smart. which leads us into the Valor Lakefront. This area is like a mini town for the Sinnoh region with a few things we can do like get this TM for Trick Room and battle the people in the restaurant for extra experience as the guide says. I then head up north and catch up with the Grunt where we defeat him and then we meet Cynthia there as well who gives us the secret potion that we can use on the Psyducks that are blocking our way. I head back to where the Psyducks are and give them the potion so we can progress into Celestic Town and meet Cynthia's grandmother. Before that I pick up the Analog Watch app since it's on the big checklist for some reason and I also realized that I forgot to use Defog on the previous route which was technically on the checklist. I figure it's too late now to just go back and use Defog for a route I've already gone through. But at least I did go through the trouble of getting the HM and I do have a Pokemon that can learn it which I can delete relatively soon in the move deleter so I guess it really isn't that big of a deal. I also get pretty lucky and get a free choice specs from the small shop here in Celestic which I can give to Kadabra Fire. and then I meet up with the Galactic Grunt, defeat him, get the HM for Sir from Cynthia's grandmother and see Cyrus again. The guy then tells us to go back to Hearthome to face Fantina and get another gym badge so we have to go back quite a few pages in the guide. I haven't talked about this as much in this guide as I had in the gold and silver guide, but this guide also has a lot of page flipping with backtracking to make it a little confusing. Luckily the guide does specifically tell you which tasks are for the return visits and which one you're supposed to do when you first get to the town, and it also tells me when I'm supposed to go back which make this part of the game a little bit less confusing than it normally can be for some players. Fantina's gym recommends Dark, Electric, and Ghost types, which means Lady Thor will have to lead the way here since it's an Electric-type Pokemon and has a Dark-type move and bite. 
This ends up going by pretty well for us, and I even battled all of the trainers before Fantina in the gym for some extra XP, since I also noticed that I'm a little bit under leveled at this point as well. Mm. After hammering away and getting another gym badge, the guide says we can go to Fuego Ironworks, although it is optional, so I skip it since it's not on the big checklist either. Next, we have to make our way to Kanalave City, or Keen Lave City. I have no idea how to properly pronounce that city, because no matter how I say it, somebody says I'm saying it wrong and gives me a different is, pronunciation. I think- Is it not Kanalave City? Do people say Kanalave? Yo, what's wrong with people, bro? Kanalave sounds the coolest- Kanalave? I upgraded my Pokedex here along the way and have another rival battle in the <laughs> okay. studio. The guide recommends I use Kana Flying type to type Trump his new Heracross. That's disgusting. That's so, that's so nasty. This time, but I, I thought it was just Canalave. Since it's still super effective and defeat Look at Heracross. At point, I, I love Heracross. Iron Island here, which is optional yet again, but I do notice that I'm still a little under leveled compared to the gym leader Byron's Pokemon, which we have to battle pretty soon. So I head over to Iron Island to level up Neptune and Sun Wukong anyway, which both evolved to their final forms. The guy even mentioned how Iron Island was a good place to earn XP, so I think it's worth it. I end up going through it pretty quickly and I get the Riolu egg from Riley who helped us go through it, but I just leave it in the PC since I really like the team we have so far. To give a quick little team recap, we have Kaza the Kadabra, which we traded for back in Orberg City for a Machop that we used in the very first gym. Flora the second, which is a recent addition to the team that I'm trying to level up. Lady Thor the Luxia, which evolved during the Fantina gym by the way, and I just realized I forgot to write that down in the script. Our starter Pokemon, Sun Wukong the Infernape, Garuda the Staravia, and finally Neptune the Wishcash. This team is a little different than most teams I use when I play through Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, besides Staravia and Luxia, which are two very common Pokemon a lot of people use, but I'm still really enjoying this team so far. Now that Wish it's well rounded. I, don't see, I, don't levels, why you I head to Byron's gym since the types that the guy recommends here are water, ground, fire, and fighting. All of which are good. types that Wish Cash and Infernape have. I use my fire type moves on Sun Wukong to dispense his Bronzor and Steelix, as the guide says. Then switch into Neptune and use ground type moves on his Mastrodon to get the victory. Now with the sixth gym badge, we can use the HM of Strength outside of battle, an HM that we got quite a while ago now, and we also get the TM for Flash Cannon, which is a pretty good move. As I head out of the gym, Barry shows up again and brings us to the library, where we learn more about what Team Galactic is doing with the Three Lakes in Sinnoh, as well as a little bit more about the lore of the Sinnoh region in general. Each of us are then tasked to go to one of the Three Lakes, so next we have to head over to Lake Valor and see what Team Galactic is up to. I head into Lake Valor, see all the flopping Magikarp and the Grunts, and eventually make my way to fight the Team Galactic Commander Saturn, and on the way, Garuda ends up evolving into Staraptor. Then I begin the fight with Saturn and lead with Lady Thor, since it has a dark type attack for his Kadabra, just like the guide suggested. I then go into a psychic type for the Toxic Heart that they have and defeat the Bronzer with Sun Wukong, although for some reason the guide doesn't specifically tell me what to do against it. It told me the exact types to use for other Pokemon, but not for this one. After defeating Saturn, the guide tells us to backtrack back to page 48, one of the first pages of the actual walkthrough by the way, to take on the Team Galactic Battle Commander Mars at Lake Verity. The guide doesn't give me much direction in this fight either, and all it tells me is that her Perugly has a Citrus Berry, so you know what that means, plug strats with Garuda yet again. <laughs> After dispatching Mars and clearing out this lake, we have to head back to Celestic Town to make our way into Mount Coronet. We'll come back to Mount Coronet again later, since for now we just have to use it to get to Route 216, but the guide has an interesting bit about Feebas and Mount Coronet. Feebas is one of the hardest Pokemon to catch in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, since it only appears in one of the rooms of Mount Coronet in the water, on different tiles every single day to make it even more difficult. I never bothered to catch a Feebas myself as a kid in these games because of how annoying it was, Hell no. but let me know in the comments down below if you ever managed to catch one of these Pokemon before. The next few routes are really snowy, which I never really liked as a kid since you would often get stuck and move even I, slower than the game. I want you to know, I didn't even know that it changes every day. I didn't know. I remember spending hours down there in Mount Coronet, literally hours trying to like find that stupid, stupid thing. And I'm like, bro, where is it? Where is it at? I went through each of the tiles, fished, 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 and you just could not find it. At. Annoying. We do have to stop and pick up the HM for Rock Climb though on the Annoying, way, it so. is on the main checklist and we do need it for it's some good. other areas of the game. And on this route, it it's also like two o'clock in the morning. I'm so sorry. You need to level up Eevee near in order to evolve into a Glaceon in this game. 
Here the guide specifically says that the icy rock is needed to evolve Eevee into Glaceon, but for some reason earlier on when we found the mossy rock, it only hinted at the idea that Eevee would evolve into Leafeon near it. Now we have to get into the last layer, say that. I didn't Eevee, tell about Eevee. but in order to get the grunts to move out of the way from so walking it, we need to get the 7th gym badge from Candace in Snowpoint City first. This gym puzzle is similar to the ice puzzle from Generation 2 in the Ice Path, However, in the guide, they don't do a great job of telling you how to get through the puzzles. The Prima Guide for Gold and Silver had many detailed pages for just about every single puzzle, which was neat, but this official Nintendo Power Guide for Diamond and Pearl just throws you in there and doesn't give you hints for any of the puzzles. I'd imagine that at least a few people turned to this guide if they couldn't figure out this gym puzzle or any other puzzle in the game, and then they were annoyed to see that it doesn't even tell you how to do it properly. I eventually make it to Candace after defeating all of the junior trainers and use Sun Wukong to knock out three of her four Pokemon without taking any damage myself even. Then against her Medicham, don't really get why she has one of these in an Ice Gym by the way. Agreed. I get that it has Ice Punch, but it's still kind of weird to see. I use my Garuda for it. Medicham ends up stalling a bit with Bulk Ups and she ends up using full restores on it, but I keep hammering away and eventually get the victory in what had to be the easiest gym battle this entire run so far. Yeah. Surprisingly, we didn't lose a gym battle Ice type suck, bro. Now we have to backtrack to Veil City. You know, you know what sucks about this? They don't even give her like the new ice types to get introduced. Like, they never gave her Weavile, Mama Swine. They gave her Obama Snow, but that was it. Like they they gave her a Medicham. Like that's come on, bro. It tells us nobody on nobody's Bruce scared about that. About nobody's scared of that. You know. Back of where we are now. Now, even though the guide has a lot of backtracking as well, like some other guides we've gone over in this series so far, I do like that it specifically tells us when we have to backtrack and what pages to look back at, unlike in the Prima guide where it just kind of ignored that. Once in Veilstone, I make it into the Team Galactic base, and I don't think that the guide could have made the map for going through here any worse than it actually is. The first room that it shows is actually the fourth floor, then under that it has a panel about the room you enter from and the room that leads into the first staircase, then it has the third what? floor page above the second floor, and then after that it goes back to the first floor. It doesn't even tell me where most of the warp panels lead to in this place, and although the stairs are marked alphabetically, I don't understand why they didn't just put each floor in order to make it a bit easier to understand. I eventually make it into the restroom area near where you fight Cyrus, so I take a nap in a terrorist base that I broke into, nothing could possibly be wrong with that, and then make my way up to the fourth floor where I find Cyrus. I lead with Lady Thor in this battle as the guide recommends that he use electric types for his Murkrow and Golbat, then finish off Sneasel with Sun Wukong. It did mention how Sneasel has a Citrus Berry, so I was tempted to go for Pluck on it, but the guide told me to use a Fighting type move instead, so I listened, which was also probably the better play. I end up defeating him pretty quickly, get a Master Ball, and shortly after the fight we have to go fight Saturn again, and luckily this time, we do get to utilize Pluck Strat to take her Toxicroak's Berry and then knock it out. Now we can set the three Mirage Pokemon free, being Uxie, Azelf, and Mesprit. I don't think I've ever heard of these Pokemon being referred to as Mirage Pokemon, but I free them and head out of the base. Now we have to head over to Mount Coronet and make it to the top for a few more Team Galactic fights. First, we have a double battle Mirage against Mars Pokemon? and Jupiter, which Barry assists us on, that, that although his Munchlax weird. doesn't really do much of anything here. My Pokemon end up knocking out everything, and then Barry heals my Pokemon as I get ready to fight Cyrus for another time. His team is a bit stronger than the team we battled like 5 minutes ago, and he somehow has a Gyarados now out of nowhere. The guide does give me recommended types for this fight as usual, but then it goes on to tell me to figure out which Pokemon are best to exploit his weaknesses. I am a bit underleveled, but I hammer away and defeat Cyrus for what looks like the last time in the game. Now we are prompted with the chance to catch Dialga or Palkia, in our case Dialga since we're on Diamond version, so I save the game right before the fight as the guide suggests and head into the fight with Dialga. It's level 47, which is kind of an awkward level, but I just used my Mask Roll on it to ensure that I caught it and I aimed at Big Ben. I kind of forgot about the whole Big mythical Ben's a good theme name. Here, and Big Ben isn't exactly mythical, but that's we'll a good name. That's a really good now name. Now we can finally make it into some That is a really cities. good the name. The guy that was blocking it off from the <laughs> Valley Lakefront is gone. And when we get here, we first meet Flint, who tells us to find the Sunny Shore City gym leader, Volkaner, in the lighthouse and convince him to get back into battling since he wasn't in the mood to battle. I end up finding him, so he goes into the gym waiting for us to challenge him. I am a little bit underleveled here still, but I feel like I have a pretty well-balanced team, so I go in leaning with Neptune and use Magnitude to defeat all of the junior trainers in this gym. Now all that's left is to fight Volkaner and get our final gym badge in Sinnoh. 
The recommended types here are ground, flying, and electric. Since you pulled up with a level 39 electric type gym leader, two of his four Pokemon. See, if this is Renegade Platinum, he have At like Neptune's Grass Knot for Raichu. you. And then the guide says to use ground and grass type attacks for Volcaner, although grass wasn't even one of the three recommended types at the start, which was weird. For his Octillery, I just use Lady Thor, then for his Lux, I go back into my Neptune, although Neptune so gets knocked out man. here, unfortunately. I then send out Big Ben here, who I had to replace our beloved Flora the second with, unfortunately, since the guide also says that I should use my new legendary Pokemon in this fight. I go for a couple of Roar <laughs> of Times and defeat Volcaner. It's like, it's like Game Freak knows that like Game Freak knew that when they put like this opportunity to use a legendary Pokemon anyway, that you can catch it and people are gonna use it regardless. I feel like they realized that people went that people knew how to go grab Rayquaza and Emerald and and, and the uh, legendary Pokemon Kyogre and Groudon because you can get them before you uh, battle the Elite Four and like everybody just caught them. Everybody just caught them. Why not? You know. Gym badge. Now we have to go to the shore of Sunny Shore City to meet Jasmine, a gym leader from the Johto region, who coincidentally is also found in a lighthouse in the games that she is in. She also gives us the HM for Waterfall, which is needed to get to the Victory Road. At this point, I go back and check the big checklist at the start of the guide and see that's all that's left for us to do now is go to the Pokemon League, defeat the Elite Four, and become the champion of the Sinnoh region. After teaching how long is this? Neptune, I surf really? North of Sunny Shore City and head to Victory Road. Okay. The guide for Victory Road makes a lot more sense than the part about getting through the Team Galactic headquarters, and it's pretty short for Victory Road, so I get through it pretty fast. Yeah. Now that we're on the other side, all that's left to do is one final rival battle, then challenge the Elite Four. I think. And the uh, I think. I think X and Y. X and Y and Black and White. Uh, one and two. No, 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 no. I think X and Y and Black and Y 1 have the best uh, victory roads, personally. I noticed that my Pokemon are still personally. under level, which has kind of been a running theme in this video. And although we've been managing with under level Pokemon for a while, the gap between my Pokemon and some of the first Elite Four members is over 10, so I grind everyone up to be around level 50 Bro, to, to at least whack, match homie. my rival before the last fight against him. The guide recommends five types for this fight, which is quite a lot, but luckily we have all of those five types covered. It also says how Barry has been busy and all of his Pokemon have reached their ultimate forms, didn't realize we were playing Digimon now, and that we should leave with an electric type Pokemon to counter his lead star after, which I do with Lady Thor. I wish. It also recommends that you use Heal Block if your Dialga learned it by now to counter Snorlax's rest, but then it goes on to say that you could also just use a strong fighting type move, which is arguably better, so I do that since I have Sun Wukong, which takes out the Snorlax in one hit. The last sentence in the paragraph explaining this rival fight says, Your rival has grown more canny about switching to Pokemon to type trump you, so be ready to zig when he zags. I do indeed zig when he zags in this fight, <laughs> in order to type trump his Pokemon and lay down the law for the victory of this rival fight. What the now hell? we have to prepare for the Elite Four. The guide recommends <laughs> that I buy some healing items, and a couple of pages back it even says that now that you have all eight gym badges here, any traded Pokemon will obey you regardless of level, so you can borrow a strong Pokemon from a friend for challenges to come. The funny part about this is I actually did this when I first played through Pearl as a kid. I couldn't beat the Elite Four, so a friend of mine traded me his Luxray to help out since it was a higher level than my team. We're not going to trade any Pokemon this time, however, this man Papa does C have was trash. recommended Pokemon, which is cool. It says that the best Pokemon to include would start with our starter Pokemon, in this case Sun Wukong, and Dialga or Palkia, and then it gives some other recommendations. Of them, the only other ones that we have are Luxray and Staraptor, but Wish Cash fulfills the same rules that the guide says Gastrodon will do, and it suggests that you use Gastrodon. And we also have Kadabra that we got from an NPC trade a while ago, which is very strong, so I feel very confident heading into the Elite Four. I look ahead a bit on the pages of the Elite Four members to better prepare myself, and then I head in. For Eren, the first member of the Elite Four, the guide recommends that I use my fire type since he can take out this should be it did, pretty easily. This is this, is, this is the I dub. Wish Cash, which is a ground type, as it's pretty similar to Gastrodon, which the guide directly recommends I use for this Drapion. Then I make it to Vespa Queen, Eren's final Pokemon, and have a little bit of trouble here since Garuda didn't one-shot it with Fly because it kept boosting its defenses by using Defend Order. I keep hammering away with other team members anyway, and get through Eren with only one Pokemon fainting in Garuda. Next up we have Bertha, and the guide recommends water and grass types for her, although grass types are a bit better since she has a Quagsire and Wishcash which are both 4 times weak to grass. 
I leave with Kaza here since it has Energy Ball and the Choice Specs item, but eventually he falls, so I go into Neptune to finish out this battle rather quickly. At this point, I'm feeling very confident again since the first two trainers weren't very difficult at all, and then I fight Flint. He leads with Rapidash, and the guide says how he likes to use Sunny Day first turn, which Flint actually does. I leave with Wish Cash, thinking that an Earth Kick will knock it out, but this Rapidash was a huge pain for me, and I don't knock it out in one hit. You got Solar Beam? I shuffle in a lot Yikes. of Pokemon here since it Oh my god, and Flyer, yo, what? Item, and eventually, he just keeps going for useless moves like Sunny Day, which doesn't really help him after I knock out the Rapidash. Luckily, Lady Thor takes out his last Pokemon, Drifloom, with Spark, and now we can finally take on Lucian, the final member of the Elite Four. The fight against Flint was actually so pretty hard, difficult, dude. so I'm a little scared heading into this fight. Now for Lucian, the guide specifically recommends that I use Luxray with Crunch, which I do. That's a and fire I art. Black Lucian and Agatha are like the best, or Bertha, are like the best, uh, Elite Four members in this, in this game. In this I don't care about Flint fire since it has a and Aaron. I do have just about everything the guide I hate says them for this fight, but it was still a very difficult fight. I honestly thought I would lose here since all of his Pokemon did at least half damage to me, most of them were faster, and I was ready to just head out of here and grab my team a little bit and come and back again. And they're like 10 levels above you, though, literally. Fernape lives a hit from his Alakazam somehow and knocks it out, leaving Girafferig and Medicham on his team. Girafferig outspeeds me though, and I thought Sun Wukong would faint, but the Girafferig goes for Crunch, which I surprisingly lived since it was not very effective. And then landed close. Let's go. That's fire still. All that's left now is Medicham, so I go to Wishcash and screw it a thing did earlier in the fight. Wishcash does pretty well here since Medicham kept going for Fire Punch, so I use this time to revive and heal up Garuda to eventually knock out his Medicham. This was a very rough fight, and at the end of the battle, Lucian says, You getting past the three before me was no fluke. Your power is real. Although, to be honest, I think I did get pretty lucky getting through Lucian, and you could argue that this fight was a fluke, since I was sure I would lose here. And now it's and time now for the hardest the one. Final fight against the champion Cynthia, one of the strongest trainers in all of Pokemon, and arguably the hardest champion battle. This guy doesn't say much here, surprisingly. Oh, they want you to suffer. Cynthia will with the <laughs> team here, they want you to suffer. They're like, oh yeah, let, 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 let's, let's get him down. Due to its typing of Ghost and Dark, and at this point, Fairy doesn't exist, so it has no weakness. I just leave with the Alga as I think it's my strongest Pokemon to kill it quickly, although because of its pressure ability, I end up going for Roar of Time and actually end up running out of PP on it. I get the Spirit Tomb pretty low, but then Cynthia actually ends up switching here into her Lucario. I switch to Neptune to try and Earthquake it, but Lucario does over half damage with Dragon Pulse, so I knew that my Wish Cash would fall. I then go to Sun Wukong to Mach Punch, That's so I was weird. sure the Lucario would outspeed me and kill me in one hit, but somehow I live an Earthquake from it and get off a second Mach Punch before Sun Wukong falls, Oh my god! Lucario is pretty low. I then go to Garuda, which gets knocked out by one Aura Sphere attack, and then I go into Jesus. Lady Thor, hoping to take it from Lucario thanks to its Intimidate ability, which it thankfully does. My team is decimated at this point, but I get a good break by taking out her Gastrodon pretty easily with Kadabra, although I do get poison from its Sludge Bomb. She then sends out her Spirit Tomb again, which I stay in with Kaz and kill with Grass Knot since her Spirit Tomb was pretty low, okay. and then she goes into Roserade, and I have to switch out here since my Kadabra is Choice Specs. I go to Dialga just to stall it out a bit and revive some of my other Pokemon. At this point, my strategy is to kill Roserade with either Garuda or Kadabra, then spam Intimidates from Lady Thor and Garuda on the Garchomp, so then I'll be able to kill it with the Alga and take hits much easier. I knock out the Roserade, and then Cynthia sends out a Milotic, which I completely forgot about because I thought that she only had one Pokemon left after this. I get a lucky Paralyze on it after going for Spark with Lady Thor and doing some pretty easy that damage. That Sprite for Milotic is so ugly. To heal it up a little bit each turn, <laughs> that kind of like Sprite is so this. ugly. I use this time to heal up my other Pokemon. It's at 100% just should have stayed like swirled up Lady coming Thor. out like a snake. Now all that's left is Cynthia's Garchomp for this real, is an ugly so sprite. I shuffle in my two Intimidate users so 66. I get five Intimidates off. Her Garchomp goes for Giga Impact, which I live, and then I think that this is a great opportunity to go into my Dialga since her Garchomp will have to recharge for a turn, and I think this is better than going for a 6 Intimidate. I go for Dragon Claw with Dialga, which looks like it'll be about a 3 or 4 shot, which isn't too bad, and then I see how little damage it does to me thanks to all the Intimidates I racked up against it. Dialga finally ends up taking out her Garchomp after hammering away for a couple of turns, making us the champion of the Sinnoh region. Let's go! And with that, we beat Pokemon Diamond and Pearl as Nintendo intended.
This was a lot of fun to make and it took me a little bit longer than other Nintendo videos in the past and I tried my best to follow the guide as closely as I possibly could and do everything on the main channel. That was, that was not bad. That one time I accidentally forgot about. Overall, I think this was a pretty good guide though. It did make you flip back to previous pages a couple of times, but at least it made it clear when you had to go back, although it didn't tell you how to do any puzzles or have much information about random trainers or Pokemon you find in the wild, which I thought was strange. There really isn't anything on the post game in this guide, although there really isn't much post game in Diamond and Pearl in general, or any other specific instructions on catching some of the other legendary Pokemon like Heatran or Cresselia. Overall, this was as close to as Nintendo as we have ever got through this series. Stop saying this that! the official Nintendo Power Guide, and I think I followed it closer than I did with any of the previous guides we've done so far. I already have an idea on what the next few Nintendo videos will be like, but still let me know in the comments down below which games you want to see me play next, and also check out my other Nintendo videos if you haven't already. I also encourage you to check out some of my other non-Nintendo videos as well, since you enjoy these videos, you'll probably enjoy my other videos too. Make sure you leave a like as well if you enjoyed it. If you want to support the channel as one like really does go There you go. And subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. There you go. Maybe even consider ringing the bell as well so you get notifications just in get case the you get in, the plugs in, boxes. And with all that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all next time and bye-bye. That was it. And there you go. That is uh, beating Pokemon Diamond and Prada 10 intended. I'm very... This was, like I said, I, I know that I, I called it early on, but like... The Nintendo ones definitely, like, uh, lacked a lot of personality. Um, there was, like, two or three instances where it felt like you were looking at what a human wrote with the ha-ha-ha and, like, the little weird anime laugh thing. But that was it. Um, it was cool. This was this was dope. It's long as hell compared to the other ones. But I think that's just because, like, the games are slow. The games are longer anyway. So, like, I don't know. But, Jesus, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't want to be up uh, longer than I have to. Thank you all so much for watching. Go check out the original video and pop us in the description section below. Make sure you leave a like, a comment, subscribe for some more Pokemon content over here. And I'll talk to you all in the next one. Bye.